Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm Frederick County Executive Jan Gardner, and I'm very pleased today to have as my guest, Maryland Comptroller Peter Franchot. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Jan. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you're here visiting Frederick today. Can you maybe share with our viewers why you're in Frederick today? Well, here's what I love about Frederick. First of all, the county is well run. It's well managed. Uh, it's a huge asset to the state of Maryland, uh, very integral to the future of the state's economy. So I love coming up to Frederick County, and then I get to come and visit the city, which has so much history, and it's so vibrant, and all these small businesses that are the backbone of the state's economy. Um, but in Frederick County, you seem to have cracked the code and really figured out how to uh, be welcoming to these wonderful bricks and mortar small businesses. So yeah, I got to see the pizza shop and the record shop and uh, a couple of other uh, Brewers Alley, of course, you know, we had to stop by that because yeah. I regulate the state alcohol products. So I needed to um, stop by and kick the tires there. Thank you. Well, I know all the small businesses enjoy seeing you. It's not everybody who gets to meet their tax collector. But, you know, not everybody knows what the comptroller actually does. Can you kind of describe the job for people about what you do? Well, it's nice that you asked about that. And tax collection is a big part. We've processed 3.2 million tax returns. I returned $2.8 billion in refunds. Wow. And we do it on average two days from receiving someone's uh, tax refund request and putting their money back in their bank account. So that's a it's a big operation just to do the actions of the agency, uh, and there are a lot of them. They're m mainly fiscal responsibilities. But on top of that, I've got the Board of Public Works, which meets every two weeks. It's not very well known, but it's a very powerful panel with the governor and the treasurer and myself, three of us. We vote on all the big contracts of the state, and you need two votes to pass each one. A lot of them are unanimous, but it's kind of action central as far as uh, spending of money. And uh, so I get to take the money in. I get to uh, vote on spending it, and uh, lucky me, I got a great job. Well, and I think what's unique about Maryland is that the Board of Public Works has these meetings in public. You can see them online or yep. you can attend them. I've attended a number of them and we've had Frederick items on there. So all kinds of things seem to come before the Board of Public Works. I mean, even uh, most recently, our uh, grant awards for agriculture preservation come in yep. for approval. So it really lets people see the budget in action, so to speak. Yeah, no, I'm a huge fan of the board because it meets every two weeks, Wednesdays, uh, every other Wednesday at 10 a.m. We vote on average on $400 million of state spending at each meeting, and it's wow. like clockwork all, all through the year. Yes, you have appeared several times, and we really appreciate it, but anybody can show up. It's not like uh, the legislature or something where you feel like you, know, you have to have some important role or something. You don't. You can show up if there's an item that's available and advertised. If you want to sign up to say something, you can. If you just want to come and watch us in action. You're perfectly willing to do that. It's in the governor's reception room. It's accessible. It's transparent. Uh, we welcome people to come in. And uh, I think as you have observed, perhaps, it's a good check and balance because we can approve the things that are good for the taxpayers. But we're also in a position where um, on those occasions where it doesn't make sense, we can say no. Yep, that's right. So. It, it's yeah, it's an cool. interesting thing that we do in the state of Maryland, and, and not everybody knows about it, but it's a very powerful position that you have as a member of the Board of Public Works. Well, you're kind. Uh, I don't want to, you know, the governor's the governor and the treasurer is elected by the legislature, but uh, yeah, I'm elected by the people, and they expect me to be a good watchdog. And uh, in fact, I had a beer named after me. It was called Fiscal Watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> Special brewery just for me. So lucky, uh, you know, I, I'm. Uh, blessed by uh, the uh, fact that Frederick and other areas in the state have a booming craft beer industry. Well, I know you have a regulatory, regulatory role with all of our breweries, mm -hmm. but I know you've taken a special interest in working on uh, craft breweries and their issues because they do have some legislative issues as well. Um, because they're a growing new industry in throughout the state. So you have a task force that's at work. So mm -hmm. what are the big, big topics on that group? Well, hats off to you and Frederick because you're kind of ground zero for uh, craft brewing in Maryland. You've got some fabulous big craft brewers like Flying Dog. Mm -hmm. 
You've got some marvelous small ones like Attaboy uh, here in the city. Uh, I think I just gave uh, one of the awards that we give out each year to uh, Attaboy. And uh, we just came from Brewer's Alley, which is a fabulous place. These are, I see the craft brewers as manufacturers because they make products. Uh, they're very connected to local agriculture. Uh, they're very popular with millennials who uh, are folks that we want to attract to Maryland. And the economic activity could double or triple if we could just get out of the way and say, you know what, guys, you make a great beer. We're going to let you brew it, and we're going to let you sell it, and we're going to try to keep the regulation that's appropriate for underage drinking and things like that solid, but we're not going to let you be uh, the subject of a lot of anti-competitive stuff from your, uh, you know, the other uh, folks that, that uh, are involved in this industry. We should, you know, let you have some freedom. And if we do, I think we'll be uh, within a couple of years at uh, $3 billion in economic activity. Wow. This is a big, this is a, not a small sector. Well, we have a, a, quite a few craft brewers here. Some of them are farm uh, breweries as well. And they're mostly- I've visited almost all of them. You I know probably have. I, they know you very well. It's a tough job. Someone's got to do it to uh, get out and kick the tires at these uh, wonderful establishments. But they tend to be family owned. They tend to be small. And they all have the potential to grow. But we do have some big ones like Flying Dog. And they're looking to expand their whole yep. manufacturing facility, hire 100 people. That's really something significant that is also part of this industry that I think people need to recognize that it can mean a fair number of new jobs. Oh, absolutely. And uh, they produce a lot of uh, tax revenue, which I see as the uh, comptroller. But most of all, they represent to me the innovative entrepreneurial energy of a place like Frederick County. I mean, you talk about leveraging. Mm -hmm. Uh, they leverage a lot. You talk about doing something innovative. They are very innovative. And you talk about moving into the future. That's them. And uh, they have bled into kind of uh, identification with the state's business reputation. So if you travel to North Carolina, Oregon, uh, California, those areas, and you ask them about uh, Maryland, uh, sometimes people have an old view of oh, the Chesapeake Bay. Sometimes they click on to, hey, we understand you guys have some great wineries, you have some great distilleries, you have some tremendous craft brewing. That's what I'm uh, interested in having uh, Maryland known for around the country. And because these are the folks that we want to uh, come and live here. Well, we want to attract that talent pool. And so this is part of the fun for the millennials. And yeah. of course, people our age like it too. Yeah, the beer doesn't, beer's not bad. So. I'm kidding, guys. The beer is terrific. The beer is, yeah, yeah. The and, beer is pretty darn yeah. good. So uh, congratulations, because Frederick really has figured out how to do this in a way that protects the public, but also allows these uh, entrepreneurial folks to... Uh, do what they want to do. Yeah, do what they're good at. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the economy, since you're the yeah. tax collector, uh -huh. how do you think the economy in Maryland is doing? Well, I think the public budgets are uh, a little shaky because the revenues are not as strong as we would like. Uh, but the main concern I have is for these bricks and mortar stores because they face all sorts of challenges on Main Street from uh, internet competition. Uh, that's, a, that's a major problem for the state's uh, retail operation. And we see it reflected in the revenues that we're uh, keeping a close eye on. It's not the end of the world. It just means that uh, Amazon, for example, uh, historically has not collected sales tax on an items it sells in Maryland. Recently, they've had to because they opened some big distribution facilities. And uh, I'm not allowed under confidentiality to tell you how much sales tax revenue that was re remitted to me by Amazon, but it's a god-awful big number and it just shows the reach of these internet companies. So uh, Amazon's doing the right thing now, but there are lots of big internet companies that do not uh, collect the 6% sales tax. They should. Congress has to act. On that you know, one. Hey, welcome to our world. Uh, Congress looks like it's uh, not capable of a two-car parade, but maybe uh, they'll pass the marketplace 
Fairness Act, which is what this is called. This is not a new tax. Uh, this is simply taking the existing sales tax of the state and fairly applying it's it. It's leveling the field. Because otherwise, these wonderful uh, retail establishments in Frederick, you know, it's tough because they have to pay rent, they have to pay employees, they have to pay lawyers and accountants, and, you know, they have real businesses, and uh, the Internet people don't have to do that. Well, now, if people want to learn more about the comptroller's office or they have an issue with tax fraud yeah. or something like that, how can they get a hold of you or your uh, staff? Well, we have a very vigorous uh, presence on social media, and my 1,200 employees have been ordered to respond to every taxpayer, respect every taxpayer, and get results for every taxpayer. So we're pretty well uh, regarded around the country for customer service. We handled uh, 600,000 phone calls so far this year. Wow. On average, people, it's 1-800-MD for Maryland and then Taxes, T-A-X-E-S. You dial that number, within 40 seconds, you will get a live, friendly, professional voice on the phone, someone who works in my agency. They are on your side. They're not like the IRS. They are, you know, it's, they can't always say yes. But they're going to be sympathetic. They're going to listen. They're going to help you through whatever it is is your concern. And uh, they uh, have been ordered to provide customer service. And my uh, pitch to my employees is if we can't do the little things, like answering the phone, people won't trust us on the big, the big issues that obviously uh, we need to move into because of uh, new technology and things like that. So. Yeah, no, we emphasize that a lot. I'm delighted that our employees uh, rallied to that. Uh, we just opened a call center in Hagerstown to okay. further supplement our ability to answer the phone. And I know it sounds kind of crazy that my vision is for a government is that we just answer the damn phone, but that's part of it. It's like showing up and then also, if we're not there, at least we should answer the phone. Customer service is important. It's important to business, and it's important yeah, well, to government, you guys too. Represent we represent that. people, and uh, they need to get an answer when they have a question. Well, so. you do a great job as county executive. Thank you for the leadership that you show. Frederick is very well regarded around the state as a county that uh, gets it uh, as far as the need to um, leverage what we have to get up to a new level because people need... Uh, need some uh, new jobs, new uh, income growth, and uh, new energy and commitment to the state and to the county. And I think, uh, I, well, the reason I'm here in Frederick is because I like being here. Yeah. It's a fun and, place and, to uh, visit, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I love uh, Main Street. Thank you for accompanying me, and um, uh, anything we can do for you in Annapolis, the answer is yes. All right. Well, that's I'll hold you to that one. Yeah, Thank I know you, you will. That's a danger. This, this that could was be dangerous. An, this could be an expensive visit. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me today for Community Conversations. I hope you learned a little bit about our comptroller, Peter Franchot, a little bit about what he does and his role with the uh, Board of Public Works. And clearly, if you have any questions, customer service is job one. So thank you for joining us. <laughs>